Hello, we are very glad you could join us again on this program of God's Love in Action. My name is Justice. Welcome to the show. My guest today, as usual, yes. Pastor William Bagambe, Stewardship Director is Central Africa Division, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Welcome, Pastor. Thank you so much. Now, this has been a wonderful journey we've made all together. Mm -hmm. And we've seen how much God has given as a result mm -hmm. of his love to us. Mm -hmm. And we've also been learning through his servants how we can also be able to practice the love that God has shown us through our actions. That's right. And today is an interesting one. Yeah. There's a story in the Old Testament that speaks of a drought that took over three and a half years. I, I cannot even comprehend yes. that because in Kenya, we've experienced dry spells here yeah. and then. Yes. And every time there's no rain for even two months, it's, it's mm -hmm. chaos. Mm -hmm. People die. Yeah, totally dry. So I'm trying to imagine, my mind cannot actually go around the thought of three and a half years dry spell with mm -hmm. no rain, not mm -hmm. even dew mm -hmm. on the grass. Yes. What necessitated, what, what led to this? You see, just as we need to be very careful with God, we have to be very careful with God. There are times when we do things that overstretch even God's patience. There was a, a time in Israel under the leadership of Ahab with his wife Jezebel. That was a very critical moment. In fact, the Bible says Ahab did evil before the Lord. What was this evil? The evil was he pushed the entire country of Israel towards idolatry. God was not heard of. God was not respected. Nobody minded about God. And that was too much for mm. God. He had to send Elijah. His prophet. His prophet. To announce to Ahab that it was not going to rain for three and a half years. And God shut the sky. For three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yes. Oh. Everything dried up. You know, sometimes when God is overstretched, he can shut the sky. <clears throat> Let us be very careful before God shuts the skies. He can either open or shut. When he wanted to vindicate the people after they went into serious idolatry, he opened the skies and it was too much rain until everybody drowned, only Noah and his family survived. Mm -hmm. This time around, he made it dry the opposite of Noah. And people suffered. Everything dried up. In fact, he told Elijah to go and hide in the brook. Almost the whole nation had turned against God. Yes. We still had people who still obeyed God and you know, hearkened to his, uh, his voice. Uh -huh. His prophet being one of them. Yes. You know, Elijah was now the only man who was remaining. The only prophet. Hmm. I wish we had time would have even pursued the, the story up to the end. Right. But because we are limited by time, but Elijah had only remained. You know, this is a, what is very important to us. When everybody else falls down, there is always a man who remains standing for God. When everybody else is, worship, is worshiping the idol the image placed in the plain of Dura, there is always Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There is always a man. Most times you find that there's so much evil around you mm -hmm. that you would actually, it would be too easy for you to join in. Mm. But it's encouraging to know that uh, I can actually stand for God even in moments such as this and God will recognize yes. that I've stood for him. I mean, it's challenges. If you choose God, you'll stand. Even when everybody has fallen down, mm -hmm. you'll stand. Here is Elijah, the only prophet remaining. He's standing, and God is using him, is sending him to deliver messages. Yes. You see, when he went to deliver this message to King Ahab, 
quickly after delivering the message, Elijah disappeared. Ahab looked for Elijah, he could not see. <laughs> now after you have done your assignment, you better leave the place. Mm -hmm. Elijah then disappears. We understand he went to a place where God could actually take care of him, his needs. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the circumstances here were too harsh that as much as he was a man of God, mm -hmm. the drought could not have spared him either. <laughs> no, it, it, the drought did not spare him. In fact, the brook yes. dried up. You remember he was fed by the raven. Even in, the in, raven in this hiding place. That's that right. Even the raven could not do it anymore until God directed him to another place, to the widow of Zarephath. But even before he goes to, to, to the widow, it's interesting to know that God was able to take care of Elijah in the brook, that he could feed him yes. every, you know, every other day, yes. and sustain him for yes. a very long time yes. before the brook dried, you know, eventually dried up. Yes. God can take care of you amidst every challenge you have. In the fire, he will join you. Right. In, the, in the den of lions, he will be with you. In the waters, he will make a highway. He always, you just need to be at straight angles with the Lord. Yes. So, the brook eventually dries up. Yes. What really does this signify in our lives? Precise, uh, you are raising up something very important. Nobody expected that brook really to dry. But it dried. You know, sometimes... When we see some things getting dry, mm. when we see ourselves in trouble, are, we, are, we are tempted to think that God has left us. Right. No. The presence of a crisis does not mean the absence of Christ. God will always be with you even amid this trouble. In fact, it is better to be with God in trouble than being with, without God with no trouble. Mm. Yes. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in fire. They, they were thrown three, but they are four. In fact, it was better in the fire than outside. Than outside. Yes. I mean, God will always take care of his people. This is exactly what he's doing. Even when the brook dried, still he went ahead taking care of his prophet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, the, in the process of the brook drying, God gives his servant, his prophet, more instructions. He told him, arise, go to the widow of Zarephath. I have instructed her. <laughs> I mean, that's God. Yes. I have instructed her to feed you. I have instructed her. And that was God speaking. Mm -hmm. And so this man, Elijah, rose and went to this widow. Right. It's very surprising when God, I mean, when Elijah reaches this woman, he finds the woman collecting firewood, collecting some sticks to prepare the last meal. Mm. You know, you will wonder the statement the woman made when Elijah asked for water. Elijah first asked for water. He said, can you give me some water to drink? And the woman said, Okay, but as the woman was running to get the water, he calls her back. He calls her back. He said, "You know what? Even some food. <laughs> <laughs> you need to give me some food." You would not expect that this is the kind of person that Elijah would be seeking help from. Yes. In any case, we, we expect that she would be the one actually helping try, the widow. You know, trying to seek help from Elijah. That is our perspective. Yes. <laughs> But you see, God has his own people. God has people whom he knows can do what he wants to be done. But it's sometimes embarrassing for God to begin choosing widows mm. when rich men are also there. That one tells you, if God cannot choose you, in a situation like this one, right. then you are not connected to God. God will always choose a person to do his will. You know, God would have given Elijah manna like he did to the Israelites. Yes. But he, he chose not to do that. He sends Elijah to the widow of all people. 
But you know, Elijah became a blessing to the family. Mm. In fact, I believe God wanted to bless the widow. The widow. <laughs> uh, yes. yes. And that's why sometimes we miss blessings. Yes. When God sends someone, we don't look at him or her as a blessing. We look we look at him or her as a burden. Yes. When actually God is opening blessings for you when you are helping, right. when you are giving, right. God is opening blessings for you. Despite the situation, this woman was willing to go and bring a glass of water. Oh yes. We'll find out more about that story okay. and see the reaction of the woman and yes. actually see some draw some very important lessons yes. when we come back after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the program. We're glad you're watching God's Love in Action. Pastor, before the break, we had come a long way with the story that we're looking at mm -hmm. we're studying today. Yes. And we have seen that the prophet of God, Elijah, has been sent to this particular widow. Yes. In a way that the widow can actually provide the food For to the, the servant, yes. to the prophet of God. Mm -hmm. When we know that this woman, this widow, was also affected by the dry spell. She was no exception. Mm -hmm. So we see Elijah first asking her to bring a jar of water. At least there was some water. At least there was some water. Mm -hmm. So when the woman was headed to bring the water, the servant of God calls her back and asks for food. First of all, the woman said, it was kind of swearing. Yes. As surely as the Lord lives. Yes. <laughs> I swear. Oh, eh. <laughs> kind of swearing. Eh? Said as uh, the Lord lives. God knows. Servant. <laughs> I have very little oil left. Mm. And very little flour mm. left. Mm. In fact, you found me gathering stick. Yes. To prepare this last meal. Yes. So we eat it with my child. And we die. Mm. Can you imagine eating to die? It was, the situation was very desperate. Right. Yes. It is at this critical moment, at this crossroad, the servant of God is arriving to ask for food. Mm. And when you mention food at a moment like this, what do you mean? It's insult. But you know, God wanted the woman to give that little one. Mm. You see, sometimes we, we, we don't understand how God works. At the time when you're about to give up is when God comes in. Mm. Yes. Many of us, that's why we are, we are supposed to be very patient with God. If you pray for something and doesn't seem to be forthcoming, don't think God has not heard. God has heard. It's only time, but don't give up because at the very time you give up, it's the time God comes. Right. This is the time when God's prophet is coming and says, give it to me first. <laughs> it's very challenging, but, it uh, is. but it that's is. what God wants now. It is. Yeah. And, and honestly, most of the times we actually want to cling to the little, yes. thinking that by so doing we are helping God. Uh -huh. And... God is waiting for the moment when we'll actually give it away so that our hands will be free enough to even accommodate and hold That's the right. much that he wants to yeah. bring our way. You know, just as we are very good at pleading for situations, you begin to remind everybody how you have uh, so many children to mm. pay school fees for, you have some debts to pay, so that when you get an income on which you are supposed to be faithful to God by returning, at least 10%. Yes. You don't return because the situation is bad. A friend, don't think you are doing <laughs> anything. <laughs> and, and you begin to, t to, to even inform yourself that even the Lord knows. Yes. My friend, the Lord doesn't know some of those things. He's saying, please give that which the Lord wants you to give. This is the last one. In fact, this is even more painful than yes. the tithe. Because mm. this is the last this one. Is 
this is what you have between yourself and yes. death. Yes, I mean, this is between death and, I mean, you are, you are pressed between a rock and a hard place. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't a, a, an easy decision either for the woman to accept. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Uh -huh. Go home and do as you have said. Exactly. But first, make a small loaf of bread for yeah. me uh -huh. from what you have and uh -huh. bring it to me. Uh -huh. And then make something. Elijah is, is instructing her to first of all prepare for oh, yes. him yes. before he, she can even prepare for herself. And yes. Let me tell you, in matters of spirituality justice, it is God first. It is God first. Elijah is helping the woman to understand that concept. Right. It is God first, no matter the situation. It is God first. It is God first. Let me tell you, it is, that, that's what makes it hard to put God's love into action. Mm. That makes it very hard for many of us. And the Lord wants us to do it that way. Even in a situation like that one, mm -hmm. that's what the Lord wants us. And then Elijah had to provide some, some education. Yes, in verse 14 he yes. says, For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Yes. The jar of flour will not be used up. Please. And the jug of oil will not run dry. Please. Until the day the Lord sends rain to the land. Now Please. that is assuring. Precisely. You see, the woman wouldn't have received that kind of assurance if she did not show some signs of acceptance. Right. Elijah sees the woman about to do that and he had to give him, I mean to give her some assurance. Let me tell you, sometimes we think what we have is better than what we don't have. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. There are some things we are going to have tomorrow that we have never had even in our lives. God is all in all for us. The providence should be left to him. And so the woman finally accepts, I think, as we go into the yes, other. Yes. And she does exactly what we do. Just as I want to, to be very quickly reminding you, In the store of Cana, in Galilee, the mother of Jesus told the servants, he said, do whatever he, he tells. tells you. Let me tell you, if we did whatever the Lord tells us, it would not be the same. It would be quite different. It would be putting God's love in action every minute. Would be giving, would be surrendering our life. This is exactly what Elijah, Elijah, I mean, is telling the woman. Mm -hmm. He's saying, "Please do as I have told you. You are, your flower will not run out. Your <laughs> oil will not run out." This is interesting, Pastor, again, because yes. previously we see the Lord actually telling Elijah that I have instructed <laughs> the widow. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in the conversation we read, it, the it woman appears doesn't the seem woman to be aware. is in darkness <laughs> about this. <laughs> it's very interesting. When the Lord was speaking to, to Elijah. Elijah, he said, I have directed, yes. I have instructed the woman, the widow in Zareph, to feed you. But when Elijah arrives and he speaks to the woman, the woman doesn't seem to be aware of anything. In fact, the woman is trying to block every statement Elijah is coming with. Mm. But even with that, the woman yielded. I think there is a way God had, had prepared the woman. Yes. Although we see some difficulties, but uh, God works with people anyhow. Mm. The woman had, I think God had prepared this woman. That's why you see God, I mean, uh, Elijah working with this woman to the level of getting food from the woman. Mm. You know, sometimes when we are uh, put in hard situations, we don't know how we, we don't know how to get out. But there is always a way out with God. She gives him the water. She gives him the food. And what is the result? <laughs> <laughs> Verse 15. Yes. So there was food every day for yes. Elijah, yes. for the woman, yes. and her family. That is how God works. 
That is how God works. And let me tell you, Justice, that has happened to many of us, mm. almost to each one of us. We eat because God puts food in our stores. Right. We drink because God puts water in our containers. It is God. And so when God says, give me that liter, like the prophet was asking, mm. we better give it to God. Because it is him at the end of the day yeah. to fill our jars, to fill our containers, to fill whatever we do, whatever we get, whatever we eat, whatever blessings, because every good blessing come comes from, God. from the Lord. Yes. I think we can only forget. We only forget. Mm. But it all comes from the Lord. And can you imagine if this woman had not released, if this woman had sent away the prophet, she was going to die because she was even ready. But God doesn't want any one of us to die. He wants all of us to live. So let's do all that God tells us. So giving does not necessarily make any one of us poor, does it? Giving has never made anyone poor. In fact, it is not the giving that makes us poor. It is the poverty of our not giving that makes us very mean. Yes, we are poor in giving, very poor in giving. It is not the giving that makes us poor, mm. but it is the poverty of not giving that makes us what we are. Great lessons to learn from this woman. Oh yes, oh yes. But the woman has now a lot of... For, for us to get to that point, mm -hmm. our connection with God is very important. Very critical. That's why we need to be on our knees all the time. The other day I said, when... The world gets tough when you are standing. You better kneel. Mm. Yes. What, what is the greatest lesson that you are picking from this story that we, we have looked at together? We see when the woman listened to the voice of Elijah, everything turned well for the woman. Can you imagine if the woman had not accepted what would have happened? Of course, there would be death. But when the woman did exactly what the prophet told her, there was more oil, there was, or there was more food. In fact, when we give to the Lord, we open our hands for more blessings. Mm -hmm. There's more blessings when we give. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Thank you so much, Pastor. You're welcome, Justice. It is my Bless prayer you. that these lessons would make a difference in our lives, mm -hmm. that we would learn to depend on God and to obey even his instructions, because right. it's from doing so that he can then be able to use us and to make us even better. That's right. What else can we ask for? Thank you so much for your time, and we hope to see you next week as we discuss more on God's blessings. Amen. Thank you so much.